When it comes to Leslie matrices, the thing we're talking about is population. And a really naive way to look at population is just to draw a graph like this, where this is the number of people or animals or whatever it is in the population. These are like years and the population is growing over time. And that's interesting, but it doesn't tell the full story about the population. A Leslie matrix allows you to go much, much deeper than that. So for instance, a population age distribution is a very interesting and important idea. So let's say we've got zero to three year olds. These might be some sort of animals in the bush, kangaroos or something. And we have like this many, and this is a number here, right? We have way more um, three to six year old kangaroos. And we only have a few of the older kangaroos, six to nine year old kangaroos. Now, fast forward three years, and we might have a different story. We might have a much older population of kangaroos. They're living much longer. We might, though, so that's our new six to nine year old age group, three years after the fact. We might uh, see that we have a smaller population of uh, three to six year olds. And we might see that we barely had any new zero to three year olds. So that's our new distribution that we did in say 2015. And this is our old distribution that we did in 2012, three years before that. And you can see that this looks like a problem for the kangaroos because for some reason, we're not getting a lot of young kangaroos in and we've got a lot of older kangaroos coming through. If this trend continues, we might have a, uh, a problem with the kangaroo population because we're not getting any replacement kangaroos come through. So being able to talk about the age distribution of a population is really important. And that's where a Leslie matrix comes in. So a good first step here is a uh, population matrix at what we call time zero. Now, this population matrix is females only. Okay, so we're not considering the males in the population, only the females. You'll see why in a second. Now, let's just say that there are 400 three to six year olds. There are uh, zero to three year olds. There are 400 three to six year olds. And there are 400 um, six to nine year olds. All right, zero to three year olds, 400, three to six year olds, 400, six to nine year olds, 400. Okay, now two things are gonna be considered when it comes to a Leslie matrix. The first thing we're gonna consider is called birth rate. And the second thing we're gonna consider is called survival rate. If you consider the birth rate of each of these population, subpopulations, and if you consider the survival rate of each of these subpopulations, you should be able to figure out what the um, population will be in the next period of time. So now I'm gonna create what's called my Leslie matrix. And it's gonna look like this. Leslie matrix is equal to, uh, and then I'm gonna put uh, B1, B2, and B3 in here. And that's birth rate one, birth rate two, and birth rate three. I'll talk more about that in a second. And then I'm gonna put uh, survival rate one in there, zero, zero, zero. Survival rate two in there, and then uh, zero in there. And I'll talk about survival rate in a second as well. Okay, so we're pretty good. Let's create the actual Leslie matrix that I'm gonna use here for this particular um, population of kangaroos. So we can say that the Leslie matrix is equal to birth rate one. Now, birth rate one is the number of children that these kangaroos have in the time period that we're interested in. Now, the time period that we're interested in has to be equal to the amount of time in the, like, in the age class, right? So the amount of time in the age class is three years. So when I write, uh, I'm gonna write zero in here. That's because the zero to three year old kangaroos don't give birth, they're not old enough. But the three to six year old kangaroos have a birth rate of 2.3. 
That means that every kangaroo, on average, in their population here, three to six, gives birth to 2.3 kangaroos every three years. Okay, uh, in this one here, we're going to do a birth rate of 0 0.4. So that means that the six to nine-year-old kangaroos give birth to, on average, 0 0.4 kangaroos every three years. So the fertile kangaroos are in the three to six year age group. Okay, um, now survival rate one. Survival rate one is uh, what percentage of these kangaroos survive um, the full three year period. So they, they survive long enough to get into this one here. All right, so uh, we'll say 0.6. So 60% of these kangaroos survive to become three to six year old kangaroos. Now I'll put my zero in here, I'll put my zero in here, my zero in here, and now I have survival rate two, which is the survival rate for these kangaroos here. And I'm gonna put that as 0 0.3. So only 30% of six to nine year old kangaroos, uh, sorry, of three to six year old kangaroos, survive to become six to nine year old kangaroos. All right, and then I'll put a zero here. And that is the construction of my Leslie matrix. Birth rate one, two, and three, survival rate one and survival rate two. Now, what am I gonna do with that? Well, I'll take this matrix and I'll do some multiplication with that matrix and something magic will happen. So what I can say here is that population in time period one, not year one, but after time period one, so after three years, will be equal to um, the Leslie matrix, which I've just created, times population zero. Um, this is population zero. So let's draw that matrix calculation up. Okay, so here we have it. Now, I really want you to take a look at what happens here now. So let's follow this matrix along. Zero is the birth rate uh, for this group. So I'm going to do zero times 400, because that's how I do matrix calculate, um, multiplication. So zero times 400 plus 2.3 times 400. Now, that's 2.3 children for every one of this population, plus 0 0.4 times 400. Now, those numbers there, if I add all of them together, I'm going to get the total number of new children, new births in the three-year period. Um, now, I'll just put my little equal sign over here. And I'll tell you that that number is equal to uh, 1,080. So uh, at the end of the three-year period, we'll have 1,080 children have been given birth to and are now in the youngest age group, zero to three-year age group. All right, now let's take a look at what happens next. I get uh, 0 0.6 times uh, 400. Now just think about what that is. That's uh, the number of these people that will or kangaroos that will survive to the next generation, the three to six year olds. Uh, and then it's going to be zero times that and zero times that because this is telling us what will be in the three to six year olds. And these numbers don't have any bearing on what will be in the three to six year olds. So there's nothing to add there. All right, and we get 0 0.6 times 400, which is 240. And finally here we get uh, we're trying to find the number of six to nine year olds. Uh, so that's going to be zero times the number of zero to three year olds, because they're not going to affect um, the number of six to nine year olds. 0 0.3 times the number of three to six year olds, because that is going, they're going to age up, but only 30% of them are going to do that. And then the six to nine year olds, they've got nothing to do with it, because they're going to not survive into the next generation. They're dead. All right, 0 0.3 times uh, 400 is 120. All right, so what have we done? We started with population zero. We create a Leslie matrix. We multiply through the Leslie matrix times population zero. And now we know after three years, the new population distribution is lots of young kangaroos um, some um, middle-aged kangaroos, and just a few old kangaroos. Now, that's the population after three years. But what about the population after th 
six years or nine years or 12 years or 15 years, what's that going to look like? Well, we can create um, population two, which this is population zero at the start. This is population after three years. This would be the population after six years. What we can do is just repeat this process, right? So we can say that that's equal to the Leslie matrix P1, population one. So the Leslie matrix was uh, that, uh, 0 0.600, 0, 0, 0, 0.30, and the population 1 is that, uh, 1080, 240, and 120, and if we multiply one by the other, we'll get some number. And you can see we get this population distribution, 600, 648, 72. This is interesting to me. We started off with 400, 400, 400. And then we had a kind of baby explosion where we have 1,080 um, 0 to 3 year olds and then some much smaller age groups here. But then after another three years, things have sort of evened up here a little bit more. And of course, we could do the whole thing all over again by saying that after nine years, we'll be at um, population three, which would be equal to L times population two. Now, if you do that, you would get something that looked a little bit like this. 1519.2, that's a bit weird population, but I'll keep it there. It's a mathematical model. 360 and 194.4. So, even Stevens, lots and lots of young'uns. Um, even Stevens for the 0 to 3s and the 3 to 6s. And now we're back to lots of young'uns and these ones here. So, um, this is okay, but... It's kind of tedious because if I wanted to know the population of the kangaroos in 30 years, that means I'm going to have to do this like seven more times. Luckily, there is a way faster way. What I've been doing so far is saying that population K is equal to uh, the Leslie matrix times population K minus one. Okay, And this is like a recurrence relation. But there is a faster way to do it. You should notice that I keep multiplying by that Leslie matrix. So I can also say, and this is the most useful thing to do, is to say that the population after time period K is equal to the uh, Leslie matrix to the power of K P. Because I'm just repeating that Leslie matrix multiplication over and over again, that will get the job done. So if I wanted to know the population of these rabbits in 30 years time, all I would need to do is say population uh, 10, right? Because it's happening every three years. So uh, the population matrix 10 is equal to the Leslie matrix to the power of 10 times population, I should put population zero there, initial population. All right, so let's put in that and see what happens. So you can see here, I've done the matrix to the power of 10 times the initial population, and I get a new matrix of 3,018, 2,557, and 365. There's some rounding errors there, but let's keep it like that. Okay, so uh, you can see the population's growing, right? Uh, and there's quite a few young'uns here. So it's very possible this video is long enough now. We have looked at Leslie matrices, Hopefully you understand the idea here of how to set up a Leslie matrix, why it works, and some of the constraints.